Hey everyone, Gleb Bakhmutov here. And today I want to talk about Cypress version 6. We just released it and it has a most exciting feature that we've been working on for a long, long time. It's called Cy Intercept. And it's a replacement for Cy Route and it used to be called during its experimental phase Cy Route 2. But now it's official, it's Cy Intercept. So here I have a little project where I have a page and I can click a button and load a couple of users. I can load three users, maybe five, maybe load a particular user. So how do I ensure that these buttons actually make a request and it goes outside and actually fetches something? So it used to be that I would have to call Sci server to start spying or stopping network requests. And then I would set up routes. So for example, if I want to spy on every request that goes to URL that ends with users, and I would use route, and I would use a wildcard because my URL at the end has query parameters. So when I load free users, it actually has limit free. Okay, so this worked, but it was very, very limited. For example, you could only stop XHR requests, and it did not work with fetch requests. Other types of resources could not be stopped, but it still works. So for example, when I find load users button, I could click on it and I can see that after the click, that request actually happened. I could wait for the request using its Alice that I saved right here. So I can see that it waited. And then I could confirm that the UI actually updated. So for example, user should have length free. Okay. So this is what your typical test that spies on a network and makes sure there are free requests shown. Okay, that's great. Uh, but my application actually deletes window fetch and installs a polyfill. So in a typical application, it would be none of that. Right, so if I reload the test right now, well, both network requests are gone. I can look at the network tab and I can see them. I can see that my application is making requests, but instead of type XHR, it's using type fetch. And because of route, doing everything by just overriding XHR object in the browser, did not see the fetch request. So let's see how we can rewrite the same test using Sci intercept. And by the way, notice that because we marked Sci server and Sci route as deprecated in our TypeScript definitions, VS Code actually highlights it with strike through and says, hey, these methods are no longer um, production ready. You should move away from them. So what do I need to do to start using Sci intercept? First of all, I no longer need serve at all. That's it. All requests go through interception practices by default. So if I want to listen to the user's uh, endpoint, I just say Sci intercept and I say as users. And right now, notice that it's working. We completely removed fetch polyfill. We're just using normal window fetch and it's working. I can see that the request being observed inside the test. Great. What else can we do? Well, uh, notice that we have a button that loads three users and loads five users. And right now they would actually both be matched right, by our intercept. So we can listen to, for example, that endpoint users but with query parameters limit free. So we can be very explicit about how we want to match our URLs. Path name would be uh, users. And again, we have uh, TypeScript, so IntelliSense work. And in this case, limit and free. Aha, uh -huh. well, when we provide query, it can have numbers because the query inside the URL should be all um, strings. So instead of three, we have to surround with quotes. 
So now we matched this request that asked for three users. And when we load five users, well, our intercept doesn't intercept those requests because they're different because the query object is different. Uh, great. One thing that has changed is that we no longer use wildcards and minimatch. We found that to be confusing. So instead, you can use either a string substring or a regular expression. One other thing that is kind of interesting. When you define an intercept and you just define parameters to match the request, we are spying. We're not intercepting. In the old days, remember to actually stub another request, you could just say fixture users JSON, for example. And that's how instead of spying, you would actually stop the network, prevent it from going to the server, and instead return a fixture or an object. So we can do the same thing here. So for this introduction, I'm just going to use objects. I'm not going to do any programmatic logic. So in this case, when we provide the second argument, that would be the response. So right now, we don't want to spy. We want to stop and stop the network call. So I'll say body. Uh, actually, no, I'll just say fixture. You have to be explicit now. And in this case, users JSON, which is my object inside the fixture folder. Now, here is interesting, right? Um, here it did not actually work. So let's figure this out. So here we're saying fixture users JSON and as users, and then we're waiting. So it, it actually found it, right? But did not respond correctly. Let's see what I did wrong. So in this case, fixture body. No, something went wrong. Let me look at console. Ah, no, no, I was correct. It should be fixture, but we actually have an, an error thrown by the browser. So here's the difference. Right now, the browser is making the request just like a real application would. And all the network interception occurs in Cypress, which is a proxy for this Electron browser, a Chrome browser, or Firefox. So when browser makes a cross domain fetch request, it actually expects in this application, the response to have this access control allow origin header to be present because it's a course request. If we want to stop it outside of browser, well, we have to respond with expected header. So I'm just going to copy it and I will say headers and all the headers that I want to return in this case. So I want to return this and I want to allow requests from any domains. And when I do this, now it's working. We literally define a proxy to respond with as realistic of an answer to the network request as necessary. Okay. So what we've done was intercept just those requests, respond just like with a fixture, just like a real server would. And then we did the remaining of a test. And by the way, as always, if we click on the wait, we can get the interception object with entire request and the response from what contain from our code that includes the body, right? And everything. So you can actually uh, validate if you want to spy, for example, and so on. So this is just scratching the surface. If you want to know more about sci intercept, well, look at the documentation page as always at on.cypress.io slash intercept. Look at our network request guide. We have an excellent recipe and I also written a blog post about the difference between route and what was called there, right, route two, but now is known as intercept. So happy testing with Cypress version six.